Hello, welcome to the Fire Chief's video message for November 2020. Let's start off with member health, member welfare, and member fatigue. As we process and reflect on our lost members, bad days, memories, calls that have impacted us, each of us processes differently. As you work through your emotions, work through the incidents that you've seen, Understand that it's not a weakness to reach out for help. Ask for help. Reach out to the county assistance processes and be able to learn how to cope with the impacts of this service in this profession. As we have been about a month since Brianna's death, I want to reach out and thank everybody who helped Brianna's shift mates, her children, her classmates, in the last month, the month to come, the years to come, as it will be a family effort for years to come as we work to help each other. As we roll into November, we're seeing the second spike, or the beginning of the second spike in COVID. Pete's gonna join me now and we're gonna talk about COVID and here we are in November. Yeah, you know, uh, Chief, I think the situation we're in now is, was pretty predictable. It's hard to believe we've been in this uh, eight, nine months, whatever it is. And uh, we've been through a lot, a lot of uh, ups and downs. Uh, but through it all, our uh, membership has been uh, right. challenged in many ways, but has uh, stepped up to that challenge, so. both as a professionally and individually and family wise. So. Uh, you know, you talked about the fatigue a little bit. Fatigue is definitely it. And, and, and we are just two weeks past the safety stand down. And I want to thank everybody for, for taking the safety stand down, taking that training, sitting down with their, their shift mates, their duty crew members, and going over the important information. Two weeks ago, we had 91 folks on the day of my email unavailable to work or unavailable to come in for their standby. This morning, that number is 79. It's coming down slowly, but we still have the highest daily number of COVID positive members than we did in the first search. Our numbers are very high and we need to keep our focus on ways and means to keep each other safe, keep our families safe, and to be able to help and respond to the residents' calls. Well, certainly not justifying those numbers, but uh, the community numbers are way up too, and uh, not only locally, but across the state and throughout the region. Uh, so that being said, uh, I think that, um, you know, with the safety stand down and the focus or refocus on our PPE and guidelines on uh, how to uh, protect ourselves and protect our patients and um, also our families, I think can uh, go a long way. So everybody should already be looking at the daily brief, but there's some new information, some great work by Captain Tim Burns is now a part of the second page on the daily brief. It's an analytics page. It talks about the PUI count. Yours today, it was at 36. So our numbers used to be in the mid teens. Now we're almost double that. And we're seeing, you know, between 20 and 30 PUIs on a daily basis. Go to that daily brief, get the updated information, of the patient encounters, the PUIs, be able to be aware of that as we are seeing that, that uptick. But let's talk about face covers, dinner tables, and turkey, because next week is, is Thanksgiving. There was a great post on the blog uh, two days ago on the 17th that talked about turkey. And it talked about everybody's personal responsibility of limiting their exposure outside of the fire station as we go to a family gathering, be it a group of, of five, a group of 10, a group of 20, there's a high chance that somebody in that group of 10 will be COVID positive or COVID uh, symptomatic. And it's important that you are looking out for your work family by wearing your face cover, by wearing the protective components when you're both at work as when you're with that large social gathering, even if it's your own family. So face covers, face covers, in station, on calls, 
we saw a discussion here recently and it probably will change very quickly to face covers required in public um, throughout the, the county and the state. Well, you know, everywhere you go, there's a sign that says uh, masks are required whether you enter any kind of business or commercial right. establishment. Certainly, uh, we have those uh, guidelines for all our fire station facilities, the fire rescue facilities. So uh, that just makes good common sense. Hopefully, some of that will transfer to our family situation or our personal situation, uh, also to protect us, but also protect our family members. And, and we're, when we're talking turkey, we're going to talk about meal time and the dinner table. We are seeing a high association to exposures at the table in the fire station. When the five of us from the engine and the ambulance are sitting down together to eat, we're eating without our face cover, naturally. 30 minutes to sit down, all of us have our covers off, and we're less than six feet apart. We've got to improve and break that chain at the dinner table. Eat in shifts. Eat a couple people in the TV room, a couple people in the watch office. Be able to separate yourself when you're at your, your weakest level of protection while you're eating without your face cover on. So we've got to do that. Additionally, one of the key components that the safety cards we sent out last week talked about, adding ventilation. Open the window. Yes, it's 30 some degrees right now. This weekend is gonna be back up into the 60s, but open a window, open a door, set up a fan, let a breeze work through. That'll greatly reduce the transmission opportunities for those airborne droplets and, and particles. So COVID fatigue, thanks everybody for doing a great job. Wear your face covers, wear that PPE as you have been doing on calls and focus on your, your personal safety, your shift mate safety, and your family safety at home. And of course, it's nothing new. Back to the basics. Wash your hands, social distance, wear the face cover. So we're in November. Thanksgiving, like I said, is right around the corner. We just kicked off the employee charity campaign. I want you to talk about that. Go ahead, Pete. Yeah, so again, we had a pretty good year last year. In fact, uh, we had a great improvement uh, working with uh, some of the labor groups and uh, volunteers and so forth. We were able to make some uh, pretty significant um, increases in our contribution. So again, uh, we've kicked out. Now, this is the employee uh, annual charity giving. Uh, campaign and it's easy to do it's online uh, so we're asking everybody just kind of give a look I mean this year I think there's a lot of um, potential uh, for charitable groups to benefit directly from uh, what we can uh, whatever we can contribute uh, keep in mind the county will pay uh, county executive has agreed to pay all the administrative costs so 100% of your contribution will go to your charity whether it's your school um, you know, you know, uh, whatever local group, uh, but certainly uh, it can be, uh, we, we recommend a couple of those fire service organizations that help firefighters directly. So we also are getting ready to come around the corner to our holiday runs, our Santa runs and our menorah runs. And, and we we're working with the health department to do that in appropriate precautions with the pandemic. So that messaging will be coming out. We, we want to see the, you know, Santa or, or, or other folks out there in the community spreading some cheer. We're not gonna have contact. We're not gonna stop. We're not gonna have gatherings around the apparatus and no handouts, but we're gonna have the opportunity for our, our, our volunteer members to go out, engage with the community with our Santa runs and our other community runs with appropriate social distancing and face covers. That also brings us to Toys for Tots. What do you got on that? Well, they are kicking that off, and I know that it's going to be a real challenging environment for uh, the Marines and the Toys for Tot program. Obviously, uh, they usually have hundreds, if not thousands, of boxes just about everywhere you look uh, throughout our community. It's going to be very limited this year, and we're going to have to take some um, uh, precautions. Uh, some uh, new, it's going to look different this year for us, too. So we're, we're in discussions on that. There's absolutely the need. We, we want to allow people to drop off the toys for Toys for Tots, as well as ensure that they're not coming into the stations to do that drop off. So 
Some work is undergoing. We don't have a final answer yet, but it will be uh, transmitted as soon as we do about how we, as, as you know, 37 key locations throughout the county can be drop-off so drop spots for, for toy um, giving. And it's gonna be a year of greater need than we've probably seen in years past. So look forward to that information coming out and thanks everybody for, for the hard work in preparing for the, that program. But just uh, give a consideration, no matter what you do, obviously we're still coming to work and have that opportunity to do that. So uh, the, there's a lot of need in the community. So this is a great time to focus on that as Thanksgiving right. approaches. So again, I know we're all tired. I know we're all fatigued by COVID and all of the changes. It's my great appreciation to each one of the people of the service for their tenacity in processing forward and answering those 300 plus calls a day. So it's a testament to your dedication, everybody. So as we wrap up this month, I wanna say use your face cover, Maintain your social distance. Wash your hands routinely. Stay safe. Be healthy. Have a good holiday season until next month.